Yeah, because I look, let's for instance, I remember watching a program not that long ago, <laughs> mad crazy, like mad crazy program, and it's about people with irrational fears. And one man came on and he was literally petrified of little people. Petrified. You cannot tell him any as far as he's concerned, little people are evil, they're the demons, they're they 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 they're elves when they're not elves, that he had everything for these people, yeah. So wow. they must have brought a little person onto stage. <laughs> And he goes, no, get the dwarf away from me, get it, it's possessed. And this is what I mean, like, there's nothing you could have said to him in that time, in his mm. brain, to convince him that person won't do him, the little person won't do him no harm. In his brain, that person's the worst. And that's what I mean about, how do we know the difference between a logical response or someone who's actually suffering from a mental health condition? How do we tell? Um, so, so you could ask him, well, why do you believe that's true? And that's obviously a question I often ask. How can you demonstrate mm -hmm. that? And you'll hear certain things that they'll say. And then you just start to, you know, drill down to find out what's at the core of this uh, with, with regards to these little people or whatever the case is. Why do you think that is? It wouldn't take long to find out where the irrational belief is. I've seen this, by the way. Uh, this woman um, was petrified of spiders. She started to sweat literally while the, the person was speaking to her. And then she went up onto stage and she went through a procedure. Uh, I can I can I can vouch for its veracity in the sense that it's a it doesn't work perfectly for every human, but it's a well tested procedure. At the end, she sat down and they brought a spider, a tarantula, and put it on her hand. So there are ways to do this. It's just do people want to do it? Like with that person with the with the, the small people, if that person said, "Yeah, cure me of this," I don't see any reason why they couldn't be cured. It's just a belief that they've taken on without good reasons, and they then, you know, have compounded that. It happens a lot. And Cotton, look, even Cotton saying, I'm like that with birds. I don't see a way to overcome it, unfortunately. So would you say that her fear oh, yeah, of is. birds is irrational, Rob? Or would you say yeah, that? Yeah, I would. Because okay. what is it, right? A phobia, right? A phobia is an irrational fear. Because what is fear? Right. It's like a negative emotion that something bad is going to happen to you or something along those lines. And then you yeah. can ask yourself, well, what will happen, right? I actually used to have a little bit of a concern with birds because of the flapping of the wings and, and all that sort of stuff. And if I look back, I like I ask myself, well, why was I afraid of that? What is it about wings flapping that, that sort of got me a bit cautious about birds? My, my sister used to have a budgie, and I was like, nah, you, you look after the budgie. And now I look back and go, why would that be the case? What is it was going on? And I tried to rationalize in my head why I thought that way, but looking back, it could only have been the flapping of the wings or whatever the case was, because it had a very small beak and a tiny little claws. So it's not like... Well, what, what are you telling me this for? The talons of an eagle or something. I saw the picture of a talons of an eagle. It's almost the size of a human hand. And that could be a bit cautious of, but, you know, budgie. So, but definitely she could. If she was, like, open for it, Cotton Socks wanted to overcome that. She could, she could be uh, cured of that irrational fear. But I think there's a difference between irrational fear and, and a rational fear, right? A rational fear would be like walking in the jungle, looking at a lion and walking over to pet it. That would be that would be a good idea. Yes, there's some humans that have that have befriended lions, but I think you'd be entirely rational to be afraid of a lion or a bear or whatever. It depends, though. It depends. Rob, if you look at the question yes, of the it says, it says um, how do you get through to someone who has abandoned all logic and reasoning? Mm. And I would say, even if we're going to talk in the fierce aspect of it, before we even get to the religious aspect, let's stick to the fear part. Is there anything you can literally say or do in that time period to calm somebody down? If it's already in their head and they've already got this envision that something bad or negative is going to happen, what can you possibly say to them to convince them nothing's going to happen? I'm not sure you can do that in the moment. Right. Depends where it is, really. Like, if, if it's like, I don't know, like an operation of some sort, you're always going to have like some sort of um, negative feel about it in a sense like that. Yeah. Look at what Cotton yeah. Socks wrote, mm. right? That, that's, that's, that is textbook of what, what, how people picture things. She wrote, there the wings, the sound, the sounds, and the beak. I just picture it pecking my eyes out. So she has a picture wow. in her mind of what's happening. The wings and the sound why would you be afraid of that it's just something that's different right same thing i had right but if you ask yourself why would it be afraid you probably wouldn't have a good answer to this but what's going on there is she's made a picture and what what happens mm -hmm. in psychology at least is you you change that picture so you rub out that picture and there's, there's psychological techniques that can help your mind overcome that that process can take like less than an hour then it can change entirely possible she could be cured if she wanted to 
in our evolutionary history, we were fearful because we could get eaten. So we'd err on the side of running away. But it's now gone, you know, some people take it to an extreme where it's demonstrably not harmful in the case of a bird. What's the chance of a bird picking somebody's eye out? It depends bird. what country you're in. No, because in, in the, the animals in Europe or America, they might be a bit tame, but the ones that are like in their rural area, that they, that they might actually pick on people, not pick on people, but abuse you. I do like you, Toraki. You are... Uh, <laughs> you, are like a, you are like a comedian. You have to excuse you are, my brother Torok. Yeah. He's not well, but no, no, you I just do. excuse I like him. <laughs> no, cause I'll be honest. When I was when I was growing up in Jamaica, there was like these geese, and uh, that my grandma did say like they will poke your eyes out, and that did make me a bit shook at them. If, if there's loads of geese and it's you one, it, they, they're definitely going to abuse you or try and make you frightened. Why? Or... Why would you believe that? No, they pick they pick your eyes out. I heard with the geese for some reason. Honestly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because that, that's how chickens, um, not chickens, or birds fight, they, they, they pick each other's eyes out. I mean, they might, they might do that, but I don't think they've got a chance of doing that against a human unless you lie down there and get them into a frenzy. No, well, ge geese are quite fast. If, if you run, they can catch you as well. <laughs> People used to run away from geese in, in England as well. Did they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, geese and all that, they're dangerous, mate. Oh, I haven't come across a dangerous goose yet, but I guess it's always possible. Like some some of them are, are, are quite tame, but like I think there are dangerous ones as well. That like, you know, and and even one time on um, you being framed, um, I, I saw one even bite somebody in the, in a in a weird place. In a weird place. What is a weird place? In, in a weird place. Oh, okay. No, but that's what I'm trying to say, like, they're, they're, they're dodgy, not dodgy, but, like, they're, 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 they're quite vicious, very vicious, man. And, like, um, jankros or vultures, they, they wait around for, like, they, they'll they circle you and then literally wait for you to die. Subscribe to The Reanimator and hit the notification bell. Like, share, all that good stuff.